You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and we want to help you guys help us keep the conversation going. You can do that by supporting the show, share it online with your friends and family, leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description so you can do just that. We're going to help you help us so that we can help you help others. Yeah, there you go. I like that. It's it's kind of long. Help you help us to help you help others. Boom. I don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't like it. Wait, wait, wait. Scrap that? (laughs) Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, My self-esteem is in the floor. Uh, So our verse of the day today comes from Daniel chapter 6, verse 28. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Mm. You know, out of context, that verse really doesn't have a whole lot to add, but there's so much story behind that. You know, Daniel reigning after all this stuff that he's been through. Yeah, Daniel is an incredible character in the Bible. Um, If you've never read his story, there's a lot that happens in the book of Daniel. This particular verse takes place after the lion's den. Mm -hmm. So King Darius is in charge. Daniel's been convicted of praying to the one true God and thrown in the lion's den. We know the story. God keeps him safe. And then the people who accused him are thrown to the lions. But this is evidence of God keeping Daniel not only safe, but helping him to prosper and be successful in a foreign land. That's right. I mean, this is not a land where he's surrounded by people who believe like he does, who uh, operate like he does. He's a foreigner in this land Mm -hmm. taken into exile. And yet God is blessing him in both Darius's reign in Cyrus's reign, in in his precursors, uh, Belshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel was in in place. Daniel was prospering through the reign of four different kings. That's right. And God had his hand on Daniel's life. I I particularly like the book of Daniel because it lends so much uh, historical credibility to the Bible. Not to say that the others don't, but in in Daniel, it's very hard to dispute because the Babylonian Empire was such a world superpower and there's so much recorded about it and all these different kings that also appear in the Bible. And also you got to think about like the prophecies, like there's a prophecy in there about Alexander the Great and Mm -hmm. these four empires that are going to rule and every single one of them came to pass. Yeah. So Daniel is a book I think people tend to flock to for the for the children's stories, but yeah. then they kind of veer away from for all these yeah. prophecies because they're complicated. Yeah, if you've never read the book of Daniel, it's much more than just the lions. Oh yeah, very much That's so. That's an important part, but it's much more, so go read it. One of my one of my favorite books in the Old Testament. And we want to be able to bring you guys the Word of God, uh, and part of the way you do that is by downloading the Date the Word app. They're a partial sponsor of today's episode. Make sure you download it right now for free on iPhone or Android. Every single day connects today's date with God's Word with the hope of making it more memorable for you. We got some advice that no one needed. Mm. Uh, we haven't done this segment in a little bit. It's called Advice No One Needed. I do not have a sound effect for it, so let me just see. Advice that let no one see. needed. Let me. You, no one uh, wanted. Let's see. No one what, asked for it, and probably we, no one will benefit Here we from. go. Here's one for advice no one needed. Ready? Ready? <laughs> My leg. <laughs> My leg. I, I, I don't have one. We're, we're, we're still working on our sound effects. <laughs> How about this? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's some advice no one needed. Yeah. Uh, so here's some advice uh, that has been helpful to me, uh-huh. right, as a man. And I'm, I'm bringing you this as a man. This is a man's advice for the manliest of men, okay? Think okay. about the manliest thing you can and then take this advice to heart. Okay. Get a pedicure. <laughs> Get a pedicure, That was seriously. not the direction I expected this it's, to go. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as a guy... We we are uh, we don't do anything like that, right? We don't go get our manicures. We barely like getting our hair cut. Yeah. Uh, we don't do, want to do anything where anyone is touching us or or anything like that. So when I tell you, and I'm like that, I'm a touch me not. You know, if people come and put the hand, hey, I'm so proud of you, boy, and they're like rubbing my back. I'm like, ooh, brother, ooh, brother, ooh. You, you know, I I don't love it. So when I tell you that sitting down and putting your feet in a tub of warm water and having people like file your toenails and like massage your feet and clean them feels incredible and it actually imp- like it improved my whole day when i tell you that you know i'm not lying to you right you don't like it you never had a pedicure i've never had one go, well, just, go get the, one. just the thought of it like my my feet are so ticklish like just the thought of someone yeah, touching but, my feet makes me like <laughs> but they're not like <laughs> i know they're, they're i firm. know that they got real those 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 women i'm telling you man they got firm hands they got firm hands. they could probably crush my hand with a handshake Ugh. Nicholas gets them. I don't know. You get I'm, not, you get I'm not opposed he to You don't it. like them, though. You don't get them? You go, why are you lying on camera? No <laughs> one can even see you. No <laughs> one can see you shake your head, and I know you're lying. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I just, 
Ugh, the thought of it just kind of makes my skin crawl. Here's a the thing. Here's the thing. All the men listen because I'm speaking to the men. Women are like, "Oh yes, girl, slay queen. I'll get a pedicure today." Ellie actually texted me yesterday, and it was it was sort of like, "Hey, are you okay if I go get a pedicure?" But it was really more of an announcement. Like, "This is what I'm doing. Yes, money is going to be spent on yeah, this. Just FYI, don't talk to me. Here's about what it. the charge is going to be." But I was like, "All right, whatever," because I know, like, after a hard day, like that just feels great. I'm telling you, it feels good. It improves your whole mood. Okay. Well, uh, and and it's just a time where you can just sit and just kind of be pampered, just be taken yeah. care of. Yeah, you know. Now, I, now I would like a massage. Yeah, like that's you talk about like touch me not like kind of, but but a massage feels good. It, especially if you go to someone like who really knows what they're doing. Yeah. Like I had the first massage I ever had. We we did on the cruise and our honeymoon. Mm-hmm. And man, I walked out. That of was there. my first massage. Was on mine and Elizabeth's honeymoon. I walked out of there feeling like I was floating on air. Yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. man. Yeah. I felt like I could just melt. Like, oh yeah. Oh. That was that was incredible. But we got a pedicure. I can't remember. Elliot took me to go get a pedicure, and I was the same way as all the men listening. To this, I was the same way as you. Oh, that's that's for girls. That's womanly. I'm not doing that. But I'm gonna tell you, man. That woman started massaging the bottom of my feet i said you know what i could i could get used to this i had a i had a um i had a root beer i had a bag of <laughs> chips gavin was like you barely a, a year old you were getting a pedicure i was just getting that was a, a good day man. i was i was a good day you i'm know? telling you, you that's go. that's my advice and don't don't knock it until you do it if you want to write in and be like oh oh you're you're a, you're a girl you're that's that's feminine do it then write that in guarantee you you won't well guarantee you you will not you will change your attitude after you get it I Please, guess, I guess I'm gonna go get a pedicure now. Do it for real, and 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 come back next week, and we'll we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, write in and let us know your experiences. Really, I mean, ladies, we know that you like pedicures, but guys, if you've out, if you've been brave enough to go get a pedicure, write in and let us hey, know guess about what? that experience. Guess who else gets them? Doctor Questions gets them. He does. Doctor Questions gets them. I don't know about Doctor Shop, but Doctor Questions 100 percent gets them. That's true. <laughs> write in and let us know two five two five eight two five zero two eight, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. What's going on, listeners? My name is John. And I'm David. And we hope you are enjoying the podcast thus far. You know, we really appreciate how many of you download the podcast every day. Right. But we also want to remind you that we are first and foremost a radio show. Clearview Today is actually syndicated through the Truth Network. And we just want to let you know right now that in addition to hosting the all-time best Christian talk show of all time. Hashtag Clearview Today. Hashtag Clearview Today. The Truth Network also, as it turns out, has an extensive library of Christian programming. We really love everything they're doing at the Truth Network because the whole goal is to encourage challenge, confront, and uplift listeners with the life-changing truth of Jesus Christ through Christian Talk Radio. And listen, we know we are not the only show wanting to expand its audience. So if you have a vision for your show or for your ministry, why don't you consider syndicating your show through the Truth Network? Because they rely on decades of experience of self-syndication with a full array of features for your long-form or short-form content. Make sure you visit the Truth Network online today at Truth network.com or you can give them a call at 336-759-0363 again that's 336-759-0363 well john are you ready (laughs) i was born ready my friend let's hop right back in all right Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart from the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right. We're back. We're back. After the break. At it again. We're back at it again with Dr. Abaddon Shah, who's a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author full-time pastor and the host of today's show, Dr. Shaw, we had some great, some fantastic advice that nobody needed. Okay. Nobody asked for this advice I'm at all, ready. But I know you. You're a man after my own heart. I didn't start doing this until this past year. Okay. I've only done it once. <laughs> I will say I've only done it once, but <laughs> I think it's great. It I think it's it great advice. Get a pedicure. Oh, okay. Get yeah. a pedicure. Yeah. Get your I'm feet taken care of. Yeah. I'm for that. Here's the thing. A lot of a lot of red blooded men listening to the show, they think it's they think it's somehow less than or weak. Yeah, I'm not having somebody rub on my feet. Dude, I'm telling you. You know what's Have you, you gotten one? Oh yeah. I got okay. only one. But I loved it. Only one foot? Only one foot. Just yeah. One foot. <laughs> yeah, they went to go Half touch the left foot. I was like, oh no, 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 just, no, just, just, just the one. I ain't got the kind of money to be throwing away on both feet. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> no, you got it done only once. I got it done only once. But I liked it. I liked it a yeah. lot. 
it was it was fun because we went and we uh, we got it done. And Gavin Gavin was only a baby when we got it done, so I could just put oh, him in the that long ago. That was it was a while back. You yeah. see, you overdue. I'm overdue. I'm way overdue. <laughs> my it's feet, time to schedule. You my feet are a little bit rough. Okay. What do you? But you like getting them as well. I get them done every three months or two three months mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. They they tell me that the 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 ladies are like, <laughs> you need to come back soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I will. Okay. Yeah. I'll it see just, you soon. Just time, you know, you have to have to make sure I get there and yeah. do that. I try to get my boys to do it. They don't like doing it. No, they they make faces. Mm-hmm. They pretend like it's hurting them <laughs> or it's tickling. <laughs> I'm like, what is wrong with you? I guys? see. I can understand being like, I'm I'm too cool for this. I don't want my friends to see me, but it, it hurts. hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and I'm like sitting over there on the other side from them on the chairs, and I'm like, stop, stop. <laughs> you, you're fine. Am I right, Nick? <laughs> Why does it hurt, Nick? It's just, oh, it tickles. It, ow, it tickles. <laughs> ow, it hurts That's, me. I'm not, I have nothing against the pedicure. I think it's a great thing. I just, uh, my feet are hyper ticklish. So I feel like really? I would be like squirming in they're the chair. Not, but and they're not like, around. they're not like, <laughs> no, I know. I know that. They massage your feet. I understand and they, that. They're, they're rough with them. A I understand bit. that. I, I, I get it conceptually. I don't think you do because you're, you're, you're still not, you haven't got a, have you made an appointment I since the break? I, I have not. You didn't make the appointment since the break? Have you ever done one? I've never done it. Oh. Have you ever had a manicure? No, I've never had one. Now I've no, uh, you know what? I had a manicure once. Did you like it? It was different. Yeah. What, what happened? <laughs> what happened was we were um, actually we were in Turkey. Oh, okay. On a tour, uh-huh. and at the hotel they had a manicure pedicure mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. Now with me, what happens is sometimes you know I'm trying to put those that, that gaff tape mm-hmm. to put the microphone put the mic, on yep. me. Where I go. So what what happens is when you're trying to put that gaff tape together, folding it like a triangle. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then, then, then sticking the microphone on it, put it on my, my shirt or whatever, Right. that it, it, it pulls up every bit of oil in your mm, fingers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So by the third, fourth day, mm-hmm. my tips of my fingers are bleeding. This, yeah. They're just and this only dry. happens on the trips. <laughs> this is not like it happens every day, only on the trips. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and get manicure mm-hmm. done. So we went to this lady, very nice. Uh, Nicole got her pedicure or manicure done, and then I was going to get my manicure. Mm-hmm. And I had just cut my fingernails Ooh. like two days earlier, mm-hmm. and I had cut them all the way to the quick. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So she saw and she said, oh, your fingernails are cut. I mm-hmm. said, yeah, I, I didn't know I was going to get a manicure mm-hmm. here okay, maybe I do a little? I said, <laughs> okay. So okay. Now she, she did her best to not hurt me, uh-huh. but since it was already a lo- so close and yeah. she that's a couple of places, golly. it hurt. That's a terrible Ooh. feeling when they when you, when you it's already pretty short, but they start cutting it even more. Yeah. But the, she, she didn't. To her credit, she did not cut anymore. Right. But already was hurting, so I was like, okay, I got to endure this for two more days now. <laughs> it's already growing, but now two more days. Yeah, that's yeah. one of those things where you just got to kind of like ball it up and you kind of make it hurt on purpose to try to... Yeah, just kind of... Uh, yeah, just try to tough through it. Yeah. That's that's a bad feeling. I've yeah. never had a manicure. Maybe maybe one day in the future. Never had a manicure. Why don't never we had a do an episode from the pedicure place? Like, <laughs> while while getting... There's while nothing, getting one. What? There's nothing okay. stopping us. I fear that I'll just be giggling. That just, you'll be trying to have a conversation. I'll just. <laughs> they don't tickle you, man. They don't tickle. <laughs> it's just like the thought of people touching my feet just already tickles me. All right, that's. I, I, I don't know. I don't I'm know I'm to willing say. to try it. I'm willing to try it. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. It's just like I fear that it will tickle. Yeah, I'm, it, it, I'm worried about it. Yeah, I don't know what to Self say. Self care well. is not a bad thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right, man. That's yeah. not, that's right. That's true. What do you, you call that? What do you call that thing? Um, Man, man, manic- manscaping. Manscape. Manscaping. Yeah. Manscaping. Yeah. Manscaping. Yeah. This, Manscaping. Ep- this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> we could never read their ad reads on Christian radio. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, really? They're, they're some, yeah, something they're a little bit, okay. yeah, they're a little bit on the yeah, uh, not good. weird side. On the weird not side. Good. All right. I didn't really have a segue out of that, so we're just going to hard shift into hard talking shift about into communion. Hard shift into the Lord's Supper. <laughs> right. We're going to hard shift into talking about <laughs> communion because they were not caring for one another. That's right, yet. Yeah. There, there you is. go. See? Hold on one second. I just got to give this man the respect he's due. I will turn over the mantle of segue to you, No, Dr. I don't Sean. want it. No. You I don't have know. a mantle. I don't know how you guys do it every day. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you so. are the one. You are the one, though. Yeah, they were not very caring towards one another. And as we talked about it yesterday, when you come to the Lord's table, Lord's Supper, communion, uh, look around in fellowship. That's right. Mm. Right? Look around to see who else is there at the family meal. And I suggested... Mm-hmm is figure out or pick out somebody 
somebody that God lays on your heart, man or woman, boy or girl, um, you know, young or old, mm-hmm. just pick out someone or a couple or a family and say, I'm going to pray for them. That's yeah. so good. That's right. And pray for God's blessing upon them. You may know them, you may not, but I promise you, uh, you will have more compassion on them. Mm-hmm. You may you may have a, a, a feeling of love towards them. Amen. And that's what God wants us to do. 100%. I'm going to adopt that. That's going to be my new communion practice. Is yeah. while, while we're doing the Lord's Supper here at Clearview, I'm going to look around. And you know all you do during the communion is just sit there and you twiddle the bread in your thumbs and you try to look like you're thinking on something yeah. deep and you're looking at your shoes. Yeah. You know, that's what... When somebody says something funny and like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, even if you're praying, even if you're kind of examining yourself, <laughs> it gives you a chance, like you said, to look around and see your yeah. church family. Yeah. Right. I mean that's uh, that's that's good. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start. That's doing right. That. That's right. But then there's another look, which is look behind in remembrance. Mm. Again, going back to First Corinthians 11, but this time to verse 23, where Paul says, "For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread." Mm-hmm. So what Paul first does is that he addresses the situation in the church in Corinth. Right. And tells them, be mindful of one another. Look around and see. Uh, you're, you're judging each other based on their social status, um, and, and you're mistreating one another. So one is hungry, another one is drunk. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is a huge disparity between members in this church body. Right. And that should not be the case. So look around in fellowship. But then he takes them back. Mm-hmm. Okay, verse 23 is taking them back to that night. Yeah, yeah. And which night are we talking about? We're talking about the night when Jesus celebrated the Passover mm-hmm. with his disciples. I think it's really important to to clear, to touch on that mm-hmm. because one of the things that Clearview does, and I've noticed this over the last 10, 11 years that I've been here, is Clearview does a very good job of laying out both the how and the why. And Paul is doing this yeah. here. He's saying, look, here's the method. You don't, don't do that. Don't do it this way. Do it this way. Yeah. And here's the why. Here's right. why you should do that. Right. Mm-hmm. This night on Thursday, people often ask the question, was this Passover, because Passover is supposed to be Friday. Mm-hmm. So what's happening here? Was Jesus misunderstanding the timing of the Passover and he celebrated a day early or because he knew the next day he would be the Passover lamb and he was doing mm-hmm. that? Or there's also a suggestion made. I think it was Gleason Archer. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, Gleason Archer was his father founded Suffolk Law School. Really? Where Abby is. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Gleason Archer was an amazing, brilliant guy. I think he was a Harvard or Princeton um, graduate. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, he went to law as well. He's a brilliant defender of the faith. But he, uh, he, he, his father started the school, I think, l- law school, and then Gleason Archer went there too. Junior, wow. junior went there as well. And that's where our daughter Abigail is. That's She's right in there. In Boston. Yeah. yeah. And, and, we, and how I found out, I knew that. But I've forgotten about it. And as we were walking through uh, the law school library, Mm -hmm. uh, law school building, I went to this hall of uh, remembrance or whatever. And I was like, Gleason Gleason Archer. Gleason Archer? I'm like, yes. He was was in law school in Boston. Oh, this is the law school. Mm Mm-hmm. So I called Abby over. I was like, "Come, come check it out." That's pretty awesome. You, this is this place became very special very quickly. Wow, that's this awesome. Is the place. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, but Gleason Archer uh, suggested that the people in Galilee celebrated the Lord's Supper. I think on fr- on Thursday, and mm-hmm. the people in Jerusalem or Judea side celebrated on Friday. Mm-hmm. This is because there were so many lambs that were slaughtered. So it was better to have this division. Oh, that makes sense. We don't know for sure if that was the answer, but I believe it's something like this. Jesus chose to make Thursday evening the Passover meal Mm. because he knew the next day he would be Gleason Archer suggested that people in Jesus' time or the early church? No, Jesus' time. Okay. Well, the church is not here yet, right? Right, but if, if, I guess I'm thinking like if he was crucified on Friday, if that's if that's concrete, or if it's at least treated as concrete, it is then, concrete. Yeah, he then, was on Friday. Well, then Passover would have to have been on Thursday, right? Wouldn't it? Because it was the day before that he had the meal. But Passover was always on Friday. The, historically, historically, yeah. Passover is supposed to be on a Friday. Okay, so you're saying Jesus chose to do it on Thursday, right? Got you, got you. What okay. Gleason Archer suggests is that because this is a big discussion, by the way. Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't know was, that. Was the Lord's Supper or Passover? That's a big discussion. It's two different things. It's supposedly two different things. Right. The Lord's Supper 
just having a meal with his disciples versus Lord also celebrating the Passover with his disciples. Those are two different things. I didn't realize those were two different things. Right. Okay. I believe that there is no division between the Galileans and the Judeans Passover. I don't find that very compelling. Mm. Okay. Evidence, you know, not being there. Yeah. I believe Jesus decided to celebrate the Passover with his disciples at the last meal, which was on Thursday evening. And that night he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was arrested, taken before Herod, Pilate, all that drama, mm-hmm. back and forth. And then the next day, that, that, that morning, he's taken and crucified by noon. Do you, con- in your estimation, do you consider his merging of those two, the Lord's Supper and the Passover, to be a, a I don't want to say a convenience thing. Is that a symbolic that he did that, that he merged them? Is that like a new covenant he style thing? He wanted to celebrate the Passover with them. Okay. Remember, he says that. Right. Go to this place, follow this man with a pitcher, and then where he goes, say the master wants to use this. Since he knows he's going to be crucified, he's like, I want to celebrate the Passover. Yeah. But this isn't necessarily. He did say that. He did say that. I'll celebrate the Passover with you. But he, this isn't necessarily like, this is symbolic. Now, Lord's Supper, Passover, these are the same in some sort of symbolic way. It's not necessarily like a new covenant style symbol. No, I mean, so, so backing up a little bit. He was going to eat a meal with his disciples, right? And that was going to be the Passover meal. Okay. But he did that on Thursday, when typically Passover is supposed to be Friday. On Friday, okay. So now we call that last meal the Passover of the Lord. Okay. Um. So now the question is: Was that a Passover meal, or did he make a whole new meal? Mm. Yeah, that's kind of that's what I was asking. Yeah. Like, is it is it significant or is it like, hey, I know I'm just going to be crucified, so let's do it a day early. I think I think the latter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I think. Cool. Yeah. I think the evidence seems to be more in favor of that. Yeah. So, let's talk about the Passover a little bit. And what, by the way, for our listeners, viewers, one reason we do this kind of discussion is because tomorrow, if somebody hits you up with a question like this, yeah, you're not like, oh, I didn't know there was an issue. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So now you're aware of it, whether you believe this was the Passover or not, or you take Gleason Archer's approach or whatever, mm-hmm. at least you have options. That's you're right. at least aware of the discussion. Right. You're yeah. aware of what's going on. And a lot of times being aware, at least for me, being aware that there's a discussion to be had is enough. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. Because at least you can say, well, I know some people say that, but where I fall is this way. Rather than be like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't I know. I didn't know there was even an issue. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. So Jesus, uh, what Paul does is he takes them back to that fateful night, mm-hmm. F-A-T-E-F-U-L, fateful night. And so we need to understand what was the Passover meal all about, mm-hmm. okay? So According to the Passover Haggadah, Haggadah is a Jewish text from the second century AD Mm -hmm. that lays out the instructions and the blessings of the Seder. Seder is the meal. Okay? Um, And in this Haggadah, it gives you all the discussion. Now, Haggadah means telling. Okay. That's all the word means in Hebrew, telling. So the Haggadah is like a text? It's a text. Okay, okay. It's a text from... Uh, the second century AD that gives us all the instructions and the blessings. So once you read that, you you sort of begin to piece things together as to what was happening when Jesus celebrated the Last Supper or the Passover mm-hmm. with his disciples. And I believe it was a Passover. Okay. There are a lot of things Jesus does that are very indicative of the Passover meal, mm-hmm. the cup mm-hmm. or this new cup. This is all part of the Passover right. uh, lang- language. Right. So what this Haggadah says is very important to understand. It says that in every generation, a man must so regard himself as if he came forth himself out of Egypt. What the Lord did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. Hmm. So you're supposed to imagine yourself there that night. That night. It's not just like my great, 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 great ancestors were sitting in in Goshen in their little huts and homes waiting for the death angel, angel mm-hmm. to pass by. Or, you know, they were all in this room waiting for the death angel to go by. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I wonder what it was like. No, you are to, when you celebrate the Passover, you are to picture yourself standing in in one of those rooms, mm-hmm. in those homes. 
And can you picture what it must have been like? Gosh, yeah. Every time I think about it, I, I, I get stones in my stomach. Yeah. Thinking about the Passover. Yeah. Like sitting there in that home, just waiting for the death angel, just mm-hmm. knowing. Like even though I know I followed the rules, I put the blood on the lamppost, but there on the doorpost. But there's always that. What if? What, what if, if it's not? covered all the way what if there's something i I missed what if i did it wrong what if there's some loophole that i'm not aware of yeah that just that that almost dread that you have just sitting there and and that stillness because think of the stakes you know yeah yeah. (laughs) that's my that's my first yeah that's not oops i painted it wrong that's (laughs) your first one's gone yeah yeah and i can imagine the some of the wives fussing at their husband did you really get every bit of that door because i know how you can be in a hurry mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little argument happening babe i yeah. got it like i promise <laughs> you better make sure this is right. can you go out there and check one more time it's like no he it's like 12 o'clock at night what if i go out there and the, he's there the dead angel yeah, like, what if he's just there? hello he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> but it's like well i you're not going to do that for the kids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. Um, I'm uh, going. Oh, I'll go check. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do know that I'm the firstborn, right, in my family? <laughs> if I don't come my back, mom, it's on you. My, it's on you if I don't come back. In fact, back. my daddy's still alive. Let me call him real quick. <laughs> hey, daddy, you did put the blood you, post, you right? You did pay that over. Because right. I, I didn't even think about that, daddy. You put it on there, right? <laughs> if they don't do it right, you get stuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> I said, yeah, that, yeah, man, there's a lot of fear. That's a lot of dread that Yeah, night. yeah. Well, and scary. also when, like, like, just think about, like, like Moses and then even, even God himself, like, when they're, like, it's always bad when the leader series, when the leader comes back and is like, I'm not joking around. Yeah. This is for real. Yeah. Y'all better do this or, I mean, you will die. You will die. You're your firstborn male, uh... Even animals, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, servants, they'll all die. The tone is is just very grim. It's like yeah. there's no room for error. We're not goofing around. This yeah. is the real deal. Yeah, it right. gives a gravity to it. I mean, even here talking about the Lord's Supper, it gives a weight to it. Not just like this is something that we do and it's just an event on our church calendar. No, there's a remembrance that happens. Mm-hmm. There's there's weight. There's history behind what we're doing. Hundred yeah. percent. You have to picture yourself in the upper room. Mm. So have you ever seen those pictures with, was it Michelangelo's? Mm-hmm. Or who's uh, Leonardo, Leonardo Da Vinci. Leonardo yeah. Da Vinci's uh, 12 uh, disciples. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, imagine yourself sitting there yeah. around that table. I feel like, and maybe this is, I don't know if this makes me better than anybody in this room, but especially you and me, we, like we've, we don't have to imagine being in the upper room because we've actually been there. I, yes, hate we to, have. I hate to single you out in that way. No, I mean, Mount Zion. Really. It, sounded, it felt was, It took me a second to figure out where you were going yeah, with this. I was like, yeah. uh, I mean, I know we have to imagine ourselves. What do you mean? But yeah, we have been on Mount yeah, Zion. Yeah, there's uh, only one person in this room who doesn't know what it's like to stand where Jesus stood and eat where his disciples stood. I mean, man, I, I, I just wouldn't want to be that person. Yeah. Have you been to the land of your ancestors? What's up? Because I have. What's up? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not personally. All right. Cause I've been there because I have been to Greece, but I've been there in spirit. But I have been there in, in body. <laughs> so just and just he also to went to Delphi, out. right? Yes, I have. That's yeah, where that's every Greek was supposed to go in his lifetime. So even if you your ancestors did not come from Corinth or Thessaloniki or Philippi or even Athens or or Corinth, Delphi. Yeah, so you gotta go. So they had to be there. Go, but and I, and Ryan, I have been. Got Ryan, that's Ryan's crazy. Been there. But you're not Greek. I know, it's I crazy. I feel like now I got to go to <laughs> Delphi. crazy. Well, you know. <laughs> what was it like standing in the upper room? Like, what was the feeling? Because like, I remember it was like, well, you, you, yeah. you go first. Well, it, it, one thing I do need to clarify, that it is the same ground. Mm-hmm. The structure, the ceiling or the wall, the pillars came later. Sure. Uh, not that she just did it in the open air. <laughs> what I'm saying is there was a room there. Right. But in time, it was all remade and destroyed mm-hmm. or redone. But it is the same area because it's Mount Zion. Yeah, like if it were, if it were like, maybe this is not a great analogy, but if it, like right now we're in this room, this is our radio room. If right. this room was demolished and they built another room, maybe over there where the hub is, mm-hmm. is that sort of similar? Like, it yeah. may not have been this room that we're in now, but it's but it's, it's very close. Mm-hmm. I mean, it may be where the steps were leading to the room, yeah. uh, and it's right there because Mount Zion. That's that's Mount that's Zion. It. Yeah. Right, that's mm-hmm. that's that hill, mm-hmm. very close to the temple and all of that. So, mm-hmm. so at some point we walked through where Jesus and the disciples yes. were eating that. Yes, last right. yes. Yeah, a lot of places you and I were walking to. Of course, the walls of Jerusalem were not there. Mm-hmm. The walls were built what four five hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but the area was more than likely where Jesus walked. Mm, yeah. And 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 there is a place where you can actually go and st- see the original street mm-hmm. of Jerusalem. We walked down there, we right? Did. And you can walk on it. 
Mm-hmm. Then there's another place where you can't, and you can just look down and see. Mm-hmm. But there's a place you can actually walk on that, and wow. it's amazing to think that Jesus came through here. A hundred percent. More than likely, he came through here. That's amazing. The the gravity of that room, I remember, really got me because we filmed in there, mm-hmm. and it was one of the, that was that was a really great one because there was no lights. You know, it was, it, everybody held up their camera, everybody held phone. up their phones, oh, yeah, wow. their, their flashlights because it was like late in the day. Yeah, um, we were it, the sun was like going down. We were like fighting for daylight and. Uh, we had Dr. Shaw stand up against the wall, and it was just so dark. So everybody came together and just had their yeah. their flashlights. Wow, on. that's cool. Yeah. I was even gonna find that video. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's it amazing. Was, it was a great, great moment. Mm-hmm. So going back to the Lord's Supper, look back in remembrance. Picture yourself in the upper room, sitting across from Jesus, mm-hmm. around him. And I know, I know, Leonardo da Vinci's idea of sitting on a table may not have been how they did it. They right. probably reclined, mm-hmm. um, but. Imagine yourself reclining somewhere. That's right. That fateful night. Yeah. And then it says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is very personal. Mm-hmm. So imagine Jesus saying that to you, to you, to you, to me. This is my body broken for you. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you have to think of him handing you that piece of bread and knowing that, okay, your body was broken for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. I know sometimes people say it was torn. It was not torn. His body was not torn. That's right. Yeah. His body was broken. Mm-hmm. It's a picture of bread. Mm-hmm. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. See, the cup after supper in, in, in the Haggadah, it gives us instructions of how there were different cups. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is a different cup. This is a cup that comes after supper. Which lends itself to the idea that this was indeed the Passover. A Passover meal. Gotcha. Mm. Yep. So he also took the cup after supper. It's not like he took the cup after supper was over. No, this is a cup that comes after the meal is done. This uh, is now yeah. a different cup. Yeah. yeah. This is the the cup after supper. Right. Not right. the cup that we use after supper right. is over. And also, by the way, that bread, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. There's the bread that's in the middle. It's like three pieces of bread. Mm-hmm. And some of these traditions came later, they say. I don't think so. I think these traditions were always there. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were always there. Um, but I don't know who is trying to say that these traditions came later. There were three pieces of bread. Mm-hmm. And they don't take the first piece or the third piece. They take the middle piece, mm-hmm. which represented, in my opinion, represented the Son of God, Jesus. Wow. Mm-hmm. Second person Second of the person, yeah. So... Um, Contrary to some of the prayers we sometimes hear, Heavenly Father, thank you for dying on the cross. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. The Father didn't die on the cross. Father did not die on the Holy cross. Holy Spirit, I just want to thank you yeah. for sending your son, Jesus Father God, Christ. thank you for shedding your blood for us. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, not no. that one. But we call that patropassionism. Yep. Yeah, true. No. God, the Father did not die on the cross for your no. sins. No, it was not him. Um, actually, it was, it was the son. And so when the Jewish people celebrate that, they take the middle bread. That's where they break it from. Wow. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And then um, two implications here very quickly. Um, it's to remember in gratitude for what he did for you and remember how much you need his forgiveness and grace in your life. That's right. And so when you put yourself back into that room 2,000 years ago, just think about what he went through for you mm-hmm. yeah. so that you can have freedom, you can have forgiveness, you can have eternal life, new heavens, new earth that's coming for you. Somebody had to pay the price to satisfy the holiness of God. Mm -hmm. You should see yourself unworthy and never able to thank him enough for his grace and mercy. Dr. Shah, I don't know if you struggle with this, but like, and I think there's a lot of people out there who struggle with this who are like in ministry leadership where you feel like you have to just fill the time. Like I've got to be saying something. I don't want these awkward lulls. But then you come to communion where it's really designed f- to be a lull yeah. for you to, to mm-hmm. for you to sit there. Cause I was thinking about it, like we've done three episodes on it. And it's like, man, that's a lot to sit there and think about. And it's like, that's why we have that time. Yeah. Right. That's why we stretch it out. And that's why we have soft music playing and no one's talking, no one's moving around because I think there's such a, especially in churches today, there's yeah. such a push to fill the time and cram and cram yeah. and cram. So having these times of just openness and quiet, 
Yeah. It was really helpful. That's right. Yeah. Instead of rushing to the next thing, we can remember what Christ has done for us. That's right. So good. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, if it was helpful for you in understanding communion on a deeper level, write in and let us know. 252-582-5028. Or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Every gift that you give goes not only to building up this radio show, but countless other ministries for the gospel of Jesus. We're going to continue this conversation tomorrow, talking more about communion, so make sure you guys tune in. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.